name of this lesson is, uh, let me get to it. Your struggle is real. And that's what I really, really want you to know is that your struggle is real. And I want you to hear, I know that for me, my bed says the struggle is real, but your struggle is real. And I just, we want, just want you to know that, um, you know, you, 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 you don't have to try to pretend that these times aren't what they are for lots of us, many of us, and that your struggle is real and that you, what you feel and what you're going through, uh, there's uncertainty, the up and down, do -si do it's real. Um, and sometimes you don't need permission, but sometimes depending on how you've grown up, someone actually has to give you permission to tell you it's okay to feel. Um, Felicia will say it this way, it's okay, you're, you're human. And um, even if other people want you to be superhuman, there are times when that cake just is not working. Putting that out, it's not working. So here's something I shared earlier. I wrote for my for my notes. It's feelings are feelings our own feeling our own feelings and thinking our own thoughts are necessary for awareness. That's necessary. We're going to talk about awareness today. Our goal is to be able to differentiate which thoughts and feelings are destructive to our continued continuation towards fulfillment. We do not want to be our own worst enemy. The distraction of our own destiny or destination. What have we heard before? Without vision, people cast off the struggle and they lose their way. When you don't have vision, when you have something, you, you, you don't see what's in front of you and you no longer care for fulfillment. I was telling them that I read an article earlier today from someone that I respect and I, I still respect them, but it just troubled me a bit because they, these are, these are teachers, scholars, and everybody has an opinion right now. And even those people who are scholars, um, with, a, with a real deal is that we don't know. We really don't know. We're really not a certain hand. Right now, lots of people need teachers and they want teachers because we want somebody to tell us what to do. But this is, a, this is another kind of space that we're in. And we'll talk about it during the service. But this is another kind of space that we're, we're in where um, you really do have to count on the trust that you had, and you have to count on what's on the inside. So with that said, this will be said earlier. When someone says, go to a higher state of consciousness, what are they suggesting here? That we become more aware. Each of us has triggers, and that's not necessarily a bad thing when you see it as part of the awareness process. Triggers mean, triggers just simply means when you see that as part of the, of the awareness process, your trigger is just really telling you that you feel something and that there's something on the inside that has been irritated, agitated, or, uh, awakened, however you want to put it. But when you do that, it becomes that uh, it's not a bad thing. And I want you to know that. Then I share it. When you don't know what's in front of you, you must learn from the past and look to the past to guide you. And, and that's what I meant when I said that. We, we, we'll look for teachers to guide us, but right now what's going to have to guide you is the past. Mimi sang it in her song, or one of these songs where she just mentioned that she saw that she wrote, well, when she was singing, that she wrote down all the things that she used to fear, all the fears that she had, and she went back and she was able to look at how God came through. That's what it means to allow your past to guide you. How is that going to guide her by using Mimi's example? It's going to guide her in such a way where the fear that's happening right now, she has some courage that she can borrow from as a witness, an experience that she can borrow from to say, I've been here before, maybe under different circumstances, but this is what I do know, God, that I have choices now. I didn't have choices when I first feared, but I have choices now. I have, I, I told you, I know that there are other doors and there's ways out of these situations because I was stuck before, I was, uh, a trepidation was happening before, I was overwhelmed before, 
um, in some other situation. And even in that situation, I couldn't see my way out and I thought it was the worst thing ever. But I'm here to talk about it. That means, that means I have choices and I can choose trust in that. And that blessing. I was just thinking when you said that, when you said, oh, I was wondering what, what would be, what would a trigger look like? And so each of us has a trigger. What would a trigger, what would a trigger look like? Well, triggers are your feelings. I mean, if someone, if you, if, if, if you're going in, your family, you're doing certain things and you seem like you have a pretty good day and someone says something and all of a sudden you feel irritated, that's a trick. You know, somebody might say, oh, that was a wound, but those in, in, in psychology, those are triggers. And there are things that make you want to react. Some people react, but it at least makes you want to react. And we all have choices on how we're going to respond or react. And why do you say they're not necessarily bad? Because sometimes when people, when, when something happens in their life and then you get anger, then you get angry. Well, some people feel bad about getting angry. Getting angry. Okay. They feel bad about their mood getting low, you know, and they judge themselves and, and, and say other things when that's human. And we do, we, we have triggers. It, and it, it tells us that we're alive. It tells us that we care about something, to be honest. And sometimes, the, but but oftentimes when these things are shared, they're shared from the negative. You know, you push my buttons, triggers. Um, you know, and they're shared from such a way that a person may try to override that with some words. I think I wrote earlier because you said this, um, having to identify. That's that's the word you use. Identify with your feelings and what's going on. And I share that, you know, identify it, but don't judge it. Because that leads you to justify it. And that uh, leads us to blame somebody. Because when we, the, the, way the, the way the brain is structured, that it's a problem solved. It's a problem solved. And so if you don't search for a solution, you're going to constantly try to solve the problem. If you don't solve it, it's going to speak to, it's going to desire to be solved. This is why we want to settle matters because you, that's what your brain is waiting for you to make a decision. And so if we don't take the time, if we judge it, which means we won't face it and we won't allow ourselves to sit in it um, without feeling worse, instead of just saying, I'm going to sit in, I'm not going to judge. I'm, going, I'm not going to make this good or bad. It just is right now. And if you don't do that, then you're going to want to settle the matter, finish that business, bring some kind of closure. And that can happen with blame. Right. So if, you know, I've learned whenever I was more inclined to be to fault find, I wouldn't look for a solution because finding the fault became the answer. Which is not which is not the answer. It's just a space fill, a placeholder. That's an immature answer when you when you haven't processed all the way through. Absolutely, and because of the way the brain works in terms of wanting to figure it out and make it something and and, and close it, um, what someone would do with blame is blame doesn't allow the healing process and all the things you just talked about. But what it does do is allow us to put something in that place. You know, you do websites. When you get a website, a, a generic website or a template, mm -hmm. they, they'll put some words. It's not real words. look like Greek words or some other language. They call that a placeholder. Mm -hmm. And what they're saying is these words are holding those pla that place until you put your words there. This picture that we chose will be in this place until you choose what picture you want it there. So it's the same thing. So, so that means I now have to get engaged. But if you are a fault finder, you don't have to get engaged. You just put, you just put somebody else's name in there and, and they hold that place. And you believe that you have gone through it. It took me years ago as an as a overused example or analogy. But I learned years ago that when you're pointing at someone, mm -hmm. you may have one finger pointing at them, but the rest of them are pointing back at yourself. Right, and that's something, because they used to say the thumb, but it is true, it's the rest of them. Right. All of them are, yeah, in order to do that. Right. Right. 
And so when you are doing that, if I be, if I try to blame somebody for this, I'm talking about anybody, I'm not accepting responsibility that I need to receive. And that is, what do you want me to see mm -hmm. in this season? Absolutely. And, 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 and that's the only way you're going to get to heal it. And that's the only way you're going to get to those places that, let me pull this back up, those places that will allow you to pull up the old and clear that space for the new. Mm -hmm. That's Wait, let me back, say it again. That's how, why, how, so that you can clear out the old and make room for the new. Okay. You know, I, I, I live my life like this. I don't get a bigger plate. I have one plate that's given to me. And one size. If it's 10 inches, then I get to fill that plate. That's my lot. The only way I can get something new in my life is I got to take something off that plate. The way I used to live my life is, God, give me a bigger plate. I'm not giving you a bigger plate. You understand? Some of that old stuff has to come off to make room for the new stuff. Yeah. I agree with what you said. Each of us has triggers, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. When you see it as a part of your awareness process, mm -hmm. when you don't know what's in front of you, you must learn from the past and look to the past to guide you. Mm -hmm. And when you said that, it triggered me to think about um, the, the different frequencies that I've talked about over the years. And that is sometimes we are doing our best and I wrote while you were talking and that is the brain is waiting for you um, to say what's important and how do I, me, my brain, respond to help. So Absolutely. your brain is waiting for you to say, okay, Duran, this is what's important. Or Duran, please say to me what's important so that I can carry out the command because I'm only, the brain is not independent. It's only going to do what it needs to do to be able to help you. And so if you tell the brain that blame is important, then the brain is going to constantly look for every person, every situation, every weather, every, every person at the uh, register or whatever the case may be to blame you for the way that you're fit. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and this is, and, and Deron, that is so, uh, it is so important for us to know, because this is how you said, you said, I think you said, did you mean it again, when you tell the brain? You, your brain is waiting for you to tell you what's important, and how can I respond to help you? Good. So I want you to hear that when the brain is waiting for you to tell it, that is not only your voice, your audible voice. Okay. It's communication. The brain is waiting for you to communicate to it. You could you could have no audible voice and still communicate to your brain with your actions. There you go. You took it. I was going to write that down. Okay. Well, go ahead. Communicate to it with your behavior responses. All of it. Mm -hmm. All of it. I, I remember that the scripture that says, um, be self-controlled and alert. It's even first Peter, second Peter. And it talks about um and casting your cares on God. Um be uh, uh self-controlled and be alert because the devil or Satan roars uh prowls like a lion, you know the little heap devour. But it first began to tell you, um, um, it doesn't say be anxious or nothing, but about your anxiety. And this is how I lived that scripture out. I, I lived it like this. Jill, as long as you are anxious and worrying and sweating, I would say don't let, don't let them let them see you sweat. But the goal is not to let them not let see you sweat because sometimes you have to sweat because it's just true. But to take those cares, cast those cares on God so that you uh, anxiety won't dominate you, dominate your life, Work through all your limbs, your voice, and everything you do, and whoever you make contact with, mm -hmm. so that every adversary and oppressor out there can say, This person, based on how he or she is carrying themselves, they are unstable. That's our target today. How do, how do you become a star target? What did, what, what did we learn from the Word of God? That when Jesus was on a mountain being tempted, right? And that's when Satan showed up. And then it said he showed up after Jesus dealt with that by saying this is written. 
in the street and made that that adversary know I got roots. You know what I mean? And I know my roots. I got roots. Okay, good okay, candy one. And I know my roots. That adversary left, came back for a more opportune time. When the adversary come back again, when he be being portrayed in terms of what we can read, right? right? When he's being portrayed. So what am I saying? When 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 you when when you are in a trial or you're in warfare. That's that's warfare against um, trying to get to that new life, not knowing what's in front of you. All you know is your own life and you feel out of control or out of source. That's when the adversary comes to see, see who he can devour. And so I've learned that when I'm anxious, I, I don't power through my anxiety the way I used to. Deron is my witness. I did it after the second service. I went up to my room, I turned on my on sales face, and I just sat in my chair. And I had no conversations because I knew that I needed that because I knew what was triggering me and I knew how I was feeling. And I did not treat how I honored myself when I told my feelings, you are real. You are real and you're sending me a real true sign. You're not lying to me. You're not lying to me. So I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to sit and I'm going to, I'm going to bring my breathing into a space away from what I felt at the time was a distraction for me. But what did I do? I listened. I listened. And so guess what? Guess what I told my brain? Just by that act, this is important to me. This is important to me. Remind me why your memory wants to know, wants to hold. What information do you want your memory to hold? They hold everything that you think and everything you see. So you tell your memory, which is part of your brain, uh, 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 structure, a way of organizing itself. You tell your, your memory. This is important. Hold on to this. It says be sober, well balanced. This is First Peter 5, 8. Be sober, well balanced, temperate, sober in mind. Be vigilant, cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours roams around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, uh, seeking someone to devour. And mm -hmm. so I wrote down here, don't listen to the roar. If you're, if you're not careful, listen to your spirit. Listen, you got to become still. You got to still yourself and say, I cannot pay attention to the roar because the roar is a distraction. The roar is to get you caught up into an emotion and, and get you to reacting as opposed to responding to what life is sending. Absolutely. So when we say that um, when you don't know what's in front of you, that's the situation we're all in. Um, you must learn from the past and look to the past to guide you. And what I shared with Deron earlier was that, you know, he would, he asked me when I was talking to him about this, what do you mean? And my example to him is that you, Deron, would, one of the ways that you could really help us with in the past and now is that you actually read the books on the Great Depression, mm -hmm. on, on what happens when the economy goes through X, Y, and Z. Right. You also read on what happened to the not just to the economy but to the pe to people when there's a pandemic okay and what 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 happens to the world what what shifts now are those are we saying oh no you can predict it no no nobody can predict absolutely but we can see the tendencies and share and you set you treat yourself the same way guess what jill when you talk to this person, you have a tendency to gossip. When you go to this place, you have a tendency to eat too much. When you go to that place, you have a tendency to shop too much. When you do this, you have a tendency to talk too much. I, I, it may not be what I do every time, but I can say I got a high probability. That's how you get, that's how you know that you know yourself and the things that you do so that you do know yourself so that you can learn from that past. I can only say that because I was actually learning from my own past so that when I get to the, the place where, where, where uh, 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 I have more at stake, 
See, listen, the adversary is waiting for you for the opportunity. And I'm not talking about no devil outside of you. I'm talking about the world. I'm talking about those cues, the, resistance. The, the temptations, the resistance, the things that go on with you, the trouble on the inside, the 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 double mindedness that we can we we all face until we make a decision to follow the right a certain path of life. Um, those things come to for a a opportunity, not just chance. I'm not talking about chance stuff. They got on my nerves at MVA. That's chance stuff. These things, we're talking about these things that come to rob you from an opportunity. And opportunities are different from chances. Right. Right. And you have to make the decision that I'm not, when it says the roaring lion, if you really look at it, I'm not going to listen to these voices. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I've had to make a decision. There are some people, there are some people that, comedians and other people that I really like. But I had to make a decision. Uh, he's fighting for his life. She's fighting for her life. They're fighting for their gift. They're fighting for That's whatever right. it is. And whatever it is, I have to now understand, and so are you. This is warfare time. Whether you all understand it or not, when it says there'll be rumors of war, you'll hear of these rumors. Where we're When we're hearing the updates of the pandemic, the hot spots, and when we're hearing this, we must understand this is what it meant. I will crack the sky. You are now hearing rumors of war and different things. And you now have to find within yourself your own discernment, not the roaring media, not the roaring left, not the roaring right, not the roaring liberal, not the roaring middle, not the roaring uh, atheist, not the roaring a uh, person who wants to keep their job in the news. And so I have to say, listen, I understand that you've got to get me to turn back, turn you back on so that you can put fear in me so that I can still be get, begin to help you pay for what you're doing. But some people are waking up and saying, I'm not listening to the roaring lion anymore. I'm going to listen to that small, still voice within me. You know, one of the articles that I read today, Brian, took me back to that a bit, was that the person mentioned sheep when it came to this 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 pandemic, mm -hmm. and I really didn't like that because oftentimes people are using the word sheep for those who are wearing masks. Right. They're saying you you you're the sheep because you're wearing masks. So I didn't like to see that verbiage in the, in, in in there, but. What did it bring me to? It brought me to some, some things I'm going to talk about in this lesson. But it brought me to just what you said, Ron, and that is this. Listen, when everybody's in the same boat, this is the rumor of the The rumor was, for me, the rumor was December, January, February. That was the rumor of this war. I'm in the war now. I'm, I'm in the, another big battle right now in terms of where we are. Right. Back then, I remember we were going. I had this um, party that I wanted to do mm -hmm. uh, to just go out with some some people. And mm -hmm. you know, it was right when it was. You can't wear a mask. You don't have to wear a mask. Um, you can still go. Our restaurants were still open at the mm -hmm. time. And I was going to go. And one person in the group said, mm, "I don't know." And it makes sense because she's uh, in um, pharmaceutical, so she kind of knows. Mm -hmm. That medical stuff and all of the stuff that's coming down the pipe. And she said, mm, I'm going to, I'm going to step out of this one because I'm just not sure. So the same day she told me that, I actually saw something that morning. That's why I didn't counsel it at first. I saw something earlier that day that said, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not this, it's not that. So I said, you know, because we I was watching as to whether I was going to do this or not. And then I just waited. And then there was someone else who said, I don't know. This this is we show more caution. So that was, it, it was a rumor for me, for me, not for the person who said, I'm not doing it. It was stronger for them at the time. And it was still in rumor. And the rumor was, this is, this is, this is going to stop restaurants and this is going to keep you inside. And this is what, I didn't see this. And you had to make a decision to interrupt your fun. Or I had, absolutely, about 
Absolutely. My plans changed. I had done the phone calls. I had made the arrangements. I had uh, 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 saw, visualized, and practically visualized it happening and just all, all of it. And I was so excited mm -hmm. about doing it. But guess what? My plans had to change. And uh, that rumor, Hey, he said you there will be wars and rumors of wars. I, I you know, I don't want to play with the words of that too much, but just to say what he said is listen, there's gonna be a situation. I'm, I'm gonna say it that way. And guess what? It was that all of those situations were, were happening. And so now that we're here, he 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 told his disciples, how what what should you do? He said, stand firm till the end. And that's why we're here to give you this message today. Why? To to give you the tools to stay firm to the end, whatever that end is. And most of us want somebody to tell us that, and they can't. They try. Mm -hmm. They can't because they this this is different when somebody started started and they set it all up, which and which means all they gotta do is go pull it all back in. It's not that easy. Right. So much has been touched now. It's global now. Should we be afraid? No. Should we be concerned? Yes. Should we be terrified? Um, at times, probably. Should we do something with that terror? Yes. Will I tell you, you overreacting because you feel like you're concerned about this pandemic? I won't do that. I don't, you know, I, I see people around making comparisons. Well, when it was the boo, blue, boo, blonde, blue, blonde, whatever, the black plague, this plague, you know, you know how many people died? Okay. So if even if people die, more people die in that place than this one. How do I tell somebody who lost their mother, their, their, their parents, that, okay, it's only two of y'all compared to all of them? What does that mean to that person? Who lost their parents? Hmm. So trying to face this logically without understanding that, that would be easy for me to say, I had to lost the family members. But for those people who have, this is devastating. This is devastating. And they know that whether the world said, whether the world wants to minimize it or not. When it says, when it says, let me go back here. I got the scriptures. Give me one second. There you go. When it said there'll be wars and rumors of wars, it says, let me find it one more time. There you go. Here it is. Be careful that no one misleads you. This is Matthew 24, verse 4. And I'm reading out of the Amplified. It says, Jesus answers, be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. For many will come in my name, misusing and appropriating the strength of the name which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the point person. And they will mislead many for, and verse six, you will continually hear of wars and rumors of wars. See to it that you are not frightened, for those things must take place, and that is not, and that it is not yet the end of age. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains, in, of, intol of intolerable angers, and a time of unprecedented troubles. And so when you said that, Jill, I had I had I was just I was just being ministered to you by what you were saying, and that was is that I've had to choose, and this is the season where we must choose our disposition. Where and how where am I going to function from? What what level, what is going to be my center? How am I going to roll? Because this is just the beginning. When we watch, and I've been saying this to you and maybe one or two, I want another person. When you see what they are now doing with our children and saying, we want our children to go back to school. 
the mindset is no different than the children who were being posed during the uh, Martin Luther King days. Right. And 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 why is that? You, listen, when people people are desperate, mm -hmm. the, the, the 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 economy is tanking. Right. So that person has that kind of desperation. So they come up with some kind of solution. Someone from where I sit. What is my desperation? I had to do with my desperation. So when when people come that de desperate, nation is desperate. Mm -hmm. The nation is desperate. You're gonna get folks who just just want out and just trying not to tank. So what what am I saying? I am not putting a a a, a, a tag on anybody at this point because I think desperation breeds to. Okay, let me not take that away, but I'm not judging at this point. Only God knows who's who and what's what. I'm just saying, folks are desperate. And in that desperation, um, when people are desperate, they don't think all the way through. And they don't think all the way through for them. And they don't think all the way through for you. But who should you be during this time? Let's put up the slide, second Corinthians, I mean, first two, second Timothy slide, please. So read this with me if you can. I'm reading 2 Timothy chapter 2, 1 through 4, and I believe this is amplified. It says, so, so get this, this is Paul talking to Timothy, Paul talking to a young leader, an older leader talking to a young leader. He says, so you, my son, be strong, strengthened inwardly in the grace, the spiritual blessing that is to be found only in Christ Jesus and the instructions which you have heard from me along with many witnesses, transmit and entrust as a deposit to reliable and faithful men who will be competent and qualified to teach others also. Verse three, take with me your share of the hardships and suffering which you are called to endure as a good first class soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier when in service gets entangled in the enterprises of civilian life. His aim is to satisfy and please the one who list, enlist, enlisted him. What, what am I, why am I reading that? I'm, I'm, I'm coming to remind you that you're a soldier. You're a soldier. And as a soldier, and I'm talking about you have been living, some of the people under our leadership, maybe some people this is in their heart for some other way, but you have been living in a way that you would change lives from the inside out for years, starting with you. You have been living this, what he tell Pete, um, um, Timothy, strengthened inwardly. You have been getting an inward strength diet for years, for years. You are a soldier. And he says, listen, no soldier went in service. We're in service. What, what, what does that mean? You say we're walking. That's what I mean, in service. You're in service. You're not at home chilling. You, 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 you're the one that's on the battlefield. When you're in battle, you don't get involved in civil, civilian affairs. And you have to decide today, what is a civilian affair? What does that look like in the situation that we are in right now? And, and we talked about it earlier. This takes courage to, to say, I won't get uh, uh, tangled in civilian affairs, nor will I take what, what I am being given and nor will I give it to unreliable people. Now, what does that mean? Some, some folks who you used to talk to all the time, they haven't crossed over. They, they, they're still not that person. He said, listen, you transmit and you entrust a deposit to reliable and faithful men. I don't talk to uh, uh, people as much as I used to because that's not the season. At right now, if I am going to impart something um, like a coach or one-on-one, -on -one, um, I want to know, are you ready for it? Jill, are, are they faithful? And I'm not talking about judgment. I'm talking about observation. Are they reliable? Not are they friends from a long time ago. Right. See, if, if you're talking about civilian affairs a whole bunch, I'm not going to get into that. Because if I call you and if I talk to you, 
what do you have to give back to me but what you've been feeding yourself? Mm -hmm. you Civilian conversation. You can tell what kind of diet they've been on when they begin to talk. And absolutely. So this is where it takes courage because guess what? Somebody's not going to like that. Girl, I ain't hurting you. Well, you. You're not calling my, you're not returning my calls. We don't talk this much. Nobody want to say, I can't talk to you. You, you know, you stuff more simple. Right. I had to make a decision a couple of times where I said, I think I said in the last thing that we just finished doing, and that was I have not done a bunch of postings like I was normally doing because I said, God, I need to know what is my response to something like right what we're going through right now. What should I be saying? What should I not be saying? But what I will not do is now spend time trying to convince others, open your eyes and pay attention. That, that trumpet has already been blown. The warning has already been blown. And I am not, if I got to talk to you, uh, a grown apple man or a grown apple woman, and try to tell you, listen, this ain't about being a sheep. This ain't about being a follower. This is about being disciplined within yourself to care about you, to care about your loved ones, to care about your grandmother, to care about your mother. Because you must understand, there's a whole bunch of 30-year-olds and there's a whole bunch of 25-year-olds. And because I am a pastor, people tend to want to tell me more things than they would tell other people. And that is where the people are deciding, I want to go hang out with my friends. I want to go fellowship and have a good time. And I ain't listening to it going to be controlled by all this sort of stuff. And then they're infecting or affecting their family members, even if it doesn't, even if they don't get the disease, the family member's head is troubled by stress because they don't know how am I going to be in the presence of this family member that I love, but this family member that I love loves this world more than it loves me and Absolutely. themselves. Absolutely. And, and one of the things that it said here in verse four, it says no soldier when in service gets entangled in enterprises of civilian life, his aim is to satisfy and please the one who enlisted him. My aim is not to hear every station say that Trump didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I heard it once, heard it twice. It's not my aim. Right. My aim, I don't need another, you know, my aim isn't to want to My aim isn't to keep finding people to say to 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 confirm what i'm say i'm feeling about this person's speech and that person's speech and this person's speech no 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 my aim is to please the one who enlisted me and because i'm in warfare and because this is about my inward strength i'm not giving more of my attention to every parcel of conversation and particle conversation that's had and neglected the one that enlisted me, especially at this time. This this is the time for, as I say in on, on the earlier part of the lesson, this is the time for me to live like uh, that my God, let, let the past guide me. This is the time that I put here, it's time to live off of what you already know and to strengthen what remains. I put this in the case that you have learned some lessons that are now to put in practice. It is time for me to put my lessons in the practice. That's what time it is. I had to tell a brother, I said this two weeks ago, but I had to tell a brother that if I, I said, you've got to make a choice. And that choice is this. This is not the time to catch up on current affairs. Yes, we can talk about it, but I know I, I don't want us to spend time catching up on what are you doing to show up for your family? What are you doing to show up for your relationships? What are you doing to show up for your, your children? What are you doing to show up? Because this is the time where you must now demonstrate, not just in words, but in behavior, in actions, and choices that my God 
is bigger than what's going on. And so therefore, I'm not going to spend this time in the house being frustrated, irritated, anxious, and going and snapping and doing this. But now I am going to choose love. Because when you said the spiritual blessing, Jill, strengthening inwardly uh, and, and the grace, the spiritual blessing, and that is to be found only in Christ Jesus, you must understand that this is a season where you must follow the way and go through your ups and your downs and make a decision that I am going to ascend spiritually. I am going to climb to a higher level of awareness. I am going to become made aware. Many of us are being made aware of our own fears, made aware of our own lies, made aware of our own denials, made aware of where we chose to get off the path of the spirit and stay on our own path. And some people are trying to rescue an old way, an old path. But I've also come to a conclusion, and I told you this yesterday. There's some things I was able to say two months ago, three months ago, five months ago, six months ago, eight months ago that are inappropriate today. It's inappropriate to talk about it. The manner in which I came at people to talk to them about it. This ain't the season. And it took one of the young disciples to say, you've already sounded the, it took two disciples, you've already sounded the alarm. This ain't your season to do that. It is our season to follow inwardly what God has already placed inside of us. Absolutely. And listen, here this is how Timothy said to, um, Paul said to Timothy, he said, so you, my son, be strong mm -hmm. in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to take all those brackets out of the mm -hmm. Amplified so you can hear the straight sentence. Mm -hmm. So you, my son, be strong in the grace. So you, what are you finding strength in? He said, be strong in the grace mm -hmm. that is in Christ Jesus. That's where your strength is. Are you finding strength in, in knowing everything that's going on? Are you finding strength in your response to what's going on, is that your strength? Mm -hmm. Or is your strength in the, are you finding your strength? Are you being strong mm -hmm. in the grace? How can you be strong in a grace that you haven't experienced? That's why your past is going to guide you. Now be strong in that grace that you know that you receive. You witness. You're the witness here. I think in this one, he used the word witness. And he says, uh, verse 2, and the instructions which you have heard from me along with many witnesses. So guess what? You know the witnesses? A witness is not, not a person who has hearsay. A witness is not a person who someone else told something to. A witness is the person that it happened to. They were there. Right. Listen, you were there. This is why you can be strong. When your change came, when you, when you told anger no, uh, when you told depression no, when you got up and didn't want to get up, when you moved forward and you forgave and didn't want to forgive, that was your experience. You are a witness that that works for you. And so right now, this is where our testimony is going to have to be, what is that? Our past, what we've experienced, that grace that we know we experienced. Listen, the world, how did, why is that? Because the world didn't get this one. And the world can't take it away. Why, why is that very important? I, I wrote a note here. Let me make sure I can find it. Be strong in the grace. Why is that? Why is that important for you to know here? Because when you try to be strong in having all the information and telling everybody with everything you heard and all that's going on in Maryland, Virginia, PG County, and everywhere else, guess what the Lord knows? That's a flimsy wall. That's the song, leaning, leaning on his everlasting arm. If you try to be strong right now and strong in knowing all that's going on logically, you already learned with me. That's a flimsy wall. Tuesday, you could be leaning on the wall of so-called truth, and Wednesday, that wall is flat. Or, or by Wednesday, that, that, that wall has so many cracks in it because the narrative and the story has changed. So God is saying this. You got boots, lean on them. Lean on them. And when it says, when, you, when it says in Mimi, <coughs> when you're talking Mimi, says she, when you reminded me when Mimi said, 
she wrote down all the things that she was afraid of, all the things that brought her troubles in her life and what she had to do. You've been saying something a lot over the, over the last um, few <coughs> bless you, over the last few months, and that was you can't make me doubt. It. You cannot make me doubt. It. And for me, I had to go back and I refused to allow this season to dominate my trust in my God, my trust in my God's deliverance, right. because he delivered me. Right. He's delivered me right. from right. anger. He's delivered me from shame. He's right. delivered me from desire. He's delivered me from lust. He's delivered me from anger. He's delivered me from pride. He's delivered me from uh, uh, blame. He's delivered me from regret. He's delivered me from being humiliated because I had to humble myself. He's delivered me from those things. And so now to learn from what I've done and be strengthened for what he's done for me in the past, I must choose at this point to say, I am going to rise to a higher conscious level. Because the day I get past fear, desire, anger, pride, and I start moving in courage and moving in acceptance and moving in love, I am able to function at a level that's close to my creator. And the closer I am to my creator, the closer he is to me. And so I refuse to go backwards. When this, I, I, I talked to somebody recently because she too was sick along the same time uh, that I had gotten ill, Tabby. And as we began to talk, I said, Tabby, we both understood. We went through some very serious health challenges, some very serious crying out concerns, some very serious seasons where we were extremely tired, but all these different things. And then as soon as we get through that, we overcome those seasons. Boom. We are now faced with death again in every media publication and everything. And I had to say, I refuse to give in to the roar of that lion. I have already received the deliverance power of the anointed one and of the point man, and of the one that I dedicated my life time, my lifetime to, and I refuse, Jill, to give in to fear. Absolutely. I refuse to act out of it, and I refuse to even talk to my loved ones with an attitude of fear in hopes that they will catch my, my drift and change. No, I don't change anybody. I change myself. Absolutely. And one of the things in that, when you were talking, he said, Ron shared, he said, I guess you was reading about all the things he was delivered from. Right. And he said, I got past fear and apathy, grief, the desire, anger, craving, regret, blame, humiliation, uh, 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 apathy, all those different things. Now, let, let, let me give you a, a fact about life because so that you can live that out forever. Getting past it doesn't mean it doesn't come, that, that it's gone. Yeah. It means you take the power away from it. Right. That's, that's what I say that again. It, getting past it doesn't mean that it's gone. It means you take the power away from it. So guess what? You may have scaled high walls and, over, and, 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 and won the battle against anger in your past over and over and over again. But, but you wasn't in this situation. Now, anger is incubating in this situation. And you're feeling it all up, all up in your chest and your temples and your everywhere. Guess what? Guess what your job is to do? Don't judge yourself. Say I'm angry again, or don't try to hide it. I, 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 I told everybody I was past this. You're never past. You're, you're never not you. You're just not allowing the old you to have power over the new you. You're just simply taking the power away from it. <clears throat> you're not allowing it to be in the space. And remember on the earlier thing I said, our goal is to be a feeling our own feelings and thinking our own thoughts are necessary for awareness. Our goal is to be able to differentiate between thoughts and feelings, uh, which thoughts and feelings are destructive to our uh, 
path towards fulfillment. So you're not, you, 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 you're going to be in that space. And, I, and I've had people, especially not, not since I've been on this journey, um, leading ministry myself, but when I was a student in, in another body of mm -hmm. people, um, the reason why pride got because they could never admit they were wrong. They could never, they, they hated to, they hated what the triggers revealed. Mm -hmm. And so everybody was hiding so that they could look like the title that they love to wear. Right. And everybody was hiding, you know, but when something would go down, it would be so ugly and petty to me. Why? Because by that time, nobody was trying to solve the problem. Everybody was trying to make sure that they still look sanctimonious. I had to tell some people that I taught and disciple. I had to be vulnerable and tell him, I'm depressed. I'm fighting depression. Uh, and I said, I know that you guys, I said, I'm, I know you guys are used to me being an appointment. I said, but I too am going through. Mm -hmm. And in me going through, I had to say to him, I said, People don't know what people who are fighting for their life and suffering and going through what they have to do every hour on the hour, every 15 minutes, every time they've got to do something. And so while you were just talking, I wrote that I had to make a decision. I had to say, listen, I am now making a life and death situation. Am I going to go into the hospital for a regular checkup? When the hospital is telling me that we want you to take a survey before you get here on whether or not you have the coronavirus or symptoms. the symptoms of it. And when I looked at that, that meant, and then I talked to some other trusted people, I said, that means, and they began to also say, there are people who are lying because they don't want the stigma of having been, have been sick. And I said, I, can, I cannot afford to have conversations with people that were non-descriptive because at this point, I must stay in truth. And in staying in truth, Jill, let me just say this part right here. I had to do truth talk, which meant that when my phone rang, I knew who it was. And I knew it was my doctor. And I knew what was going on. And I tell you, I want to cry right now because I wanted to avoid it. I wanted to avoid having to face my trial and what I had to go through. And I had to say, no, you will not. You will face this. You will speak truth. You will go through it. And you will engage in the truth. You will not listen to the roar of the thoughts of fear. And I got to talk about truth. And in talking truth, it was able to bring peace of mind. And I was able to have acceptance, but I had to say, as you said, Jill, I took the power. And I, cause I realized that power of fear, <laughs> that intimidation was trying to come back into my space. And I said, I've overcome it. And yes, I feel it, but I am human and I'm going to feel what I feel, but I'm still going to stay in to truth. And with that, when I start off this by saying, and I had to reveal to a couple of people, hey man, I'm fighting depression. And the man that I had, I was for you for quite some time, that ain't who I am right now. And I, I, I trust God. And I can tell you now, Jill, because I went through, had I not done Be Free 365, had I not committed to going through that. What's that, the, um, the good grief? The good grief okay. that, you, that you did. Had I not committed to going through that, because I had to go through that two weeks before I had to make a decision on whether or not I was going to enter into a compromised environment. And I had to say, God, help me to mourn to grieve and deal with these feelings properly because I do not want fear to now dominate my life. And I can say this, I passed the test. I passed it, why? Because I decided I'm not avoiding, I'm not going to give up no avoidance, no denial. It just
just got to deal with truth. And God, if you've been this big in my life, in my wife's life, in my family's life, I trust you to be big right now. Listen. We had this lesson and we seen some other scriptures early. But I don't know if I want to go for you on. I think this is a good place. I think it's a wonderful place. I think that the spirit is saying this is this is this is the space that I'm I'm in. This is this is where some people are, and they are <clears throat> at that place where uh, you know, where the past is going to have to help them get through. You got to know you made it. Keep going. I'm sorry. And they're going to have to go big for me. So I'm gonna skip the one. If I skip this one, the one that means I'm gonna skip the thing. There's no problem. This, you know, okay. Okay. No problem. All right. So I'm gonna go to Second Peter. Pull up the Second Peter. Um. Uh, a slide for me, please. All right. I'm going to read Second Peter, chapter two, verse nineteen to twenty. If, if, if it doesn't come up, don't worry about it. Okay. Second Peter, chapter two, verse nineteen to twenty. It said this: They promised them liberty when they themselves are the slaves of depravity and defilement. For by whatever anyone is made inferior, or worse, or is overcome. To that person or thing, he is a slave. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the full personal knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and they again become they again become entangled in them and are overcome, their last condition is worse for them than the first. Take it there. What do I what do we want you to hear? I put this, know that this crisis brings, know what this crisis brings, and don't get misled by the conspiracies. This is the time for false teachers and folks trying to know for certain things they can't absolutely, they cannot absolutely know. This is false teachers. Jesus said to his, remember to his disciples, during these times, there will be false teachers and false, false prophets, and then Peter talked about false teachers. But this, you, you want to have that because when the people are uncertain, they want to predict and especially when their job is to inform you um, and to get you and to move you into certain places. You know, what, what, what am I saying to you? Am I saying to focus on one person? I'm not. And I'm saying to go out there and say, that's a false teacher, that's a false teacher. No, I'm not, because I'm not using false in, 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 in the worst, the most negative way. I'm using false as in, listen, um, nobody knows right now exactly how this is going to be. And sometimes some people are not the kind of leaders that could say, I don't know. They're not that kind of leader. They, they feel that if they don't know, then they're not a qualified leader. I don't know is a response. Listen, what the two of Jesus' disciples said, um, can we sit to your left or left or on, on this side and that side? He said, that's not for me to give. He said, the time of the day, I, I, it's not for me to get, I don't know that time of that day. So one of, one of one, our own leader has said, was able to say, I don't know. Because what is he saying? That's all up to the Father. That's all up to the universe. It's going to have to play out. But some people can't do that. And you try, you try to force an answer. And then you create these flimsy walls, whitewash them, and, and pretend that, that they're stronger than they really are, and then uh, other people who went and believed that. Look at the states that went out there and parted. Now, I don't have, I'm, I, I don't, somebody could go party, that's not someone's fault. It is that you told them that they shouldn't wear masks and said that that was ridiculous. That's all I'm talking about. I can't, so now you have those people who, who at that point, they want to hear something so much. They're so in the space, tired of being in the house, tired of not being able to do what they have to do or want to do. And then you come out and say strongly, not evidence-based. And what happens? They go out there. So now the very three states that ran with that, they're calling them, uh, uh, comparing them to New York, 
which was our worst case scenario in the beginning. So what is my point to you? Listen, people are desperate. Don't nobody want to see this economy go down. Neither do I. But all I can do is say is God, listen, this is bigger than anything that I can put my finger on in no that way. And so what does it say here? And some of it, their last condition is worse than the first. Why? Why was that? Why? Because somebody promised them liberty, but they, they, but they were already slaves to the private itself. They were scared. That's what I mean. Somebody told them, you be free. I'm not sure. Yes, you were. You just maybe not know, your, didn't know yourself well enough to who shouldn't be concerned about this? If you're not concerned about this, then you're just not human at all. I didn't say worry. I didn't say dominated by worry. But if this, something about this stuff is concerning you, whether it is staying in the house or people losing their lives, then, 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 then you are cold, stone cold dead. Even if you don't let it overwhelm you and consume you. Um, this, this should at least cause a pause in your life. If nothing else. And when you say, before you finish, okay. when you say don't let it overwhelm you and consume you, I've been saying to my wife, my friend, uh, <clears throat> even with my own frustrations within the house of us spending so much time in each other's presence, mm -hmm. and more so it's for me, I got problems <laughs> in the presence. And but I've been hearing how some people that you know violence has gone up, domestic violence has gone up, all these different things. And this morning, my meditation and song became uh, playing your game, baby. And I didn't realize I was listening, I was trying to find Chuck Brown because that's where I remember he said playing your game. And then when I realized it was by Barry White, I said, well, I really got to go listen to the original version. And now I had never really listened. I just knew that I needed to play your game. But now get this, when I say your game, when I look at this, this is what I saw. He says, you touch me, baby, but don't you know, you can't hide. No, no. When you give it up, it's only enough to get me by. You're playing a game and it's so plain you want me to win he said you are doing what a woman does you're going through he said but you have also demonstrated that you want me to win and i'm willing to play whatever you say if love is the end and today i had to say to myself i am going to be humble i'm going to be vulnerable i am going to play the game I'm going to continue to see the, the goodness in my wife and my friends. And I am, but in you, I'm playing your game. And that is, if it is in love, then I'm playing your game. And what that means is love is my ultimate goal. Not love for me, but if it ends in unconditional love, if it ends in us becoming closer together, then I'm going to play the game. But I refuse to be caught up in the old angry man and the old frustrated man and the hurt man I used to be because I'm sold out and I live to live an everlasting right to serve. And how do I bring service into my home and to my friend's life and everything in it is to play God's group and play by his spirit. Absolutely. And, a, and the most significant things for me that you said out of that is that if it ends in love. Yeah. If it ends, listen, listen. Sometimes the truth is hard, but it ends in love. Yeah. It, it, why? Because it is geared and its goal is towards your ascension, not your descent. It's towards your ascension. It is, it is to heighten your awareness so that you can come up. And if that means if, if I feel lower while we're talking, that don't mean that I'm lower. Because that's not the goal. Absolutely. You're not low. That's the goal. I will not give you a flimsy one. I will not give you enough just to get by. I won't do it. I won't do it. Some people say, oh, your, their blood is going to be on your head. Listen, I don't need a scripture to tell me not to do that. My heart says, I want you to win. I ain't been with you for 20 years and I want you to lose. 
I didn't, I didn't share 20 years of my life with people I, I didn't even know when I was a teenager, that I didn't meet until I was 30. I didn't spend the last 27 years of my life telling my age so that you couldn't win. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm all in for your win. I'm all in. I'm committed to you winning. But I'm not committed to you feeling good about it. That's it. I'm not committed to you not suffering. I'm committed, committed to the right part of you suffering so that the, the best part of you can live. I am committed to that. Right. And I'm committed to that to anybody that's my friend. I'm always all in. That's why I can be all out. Because I leave it all on the table. And when it's gone, it's gone. But I'm all in. So let's read Hebrews. This is where we get ready to end. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 through 9. It says this, Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every unnecessary way. This is what we're talking about. How do you discover what's unnecessary in your life? This read says, and that, and that sin which so readily clings to and entangles us and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Verse two, looking away from all that will distract. Mm -hmm. Looking away to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief. And it's also his finisher, bringing into maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was before him, endured the cross. This is what I'm trying to say. There is a joy. He said, for the joy that's a, that, that comes with obtaining the prize. Until you understand, until you have vision, and you understand that there is a prize, that's what makes you get up. That's when this this is why this thing won't cause you to quit and, and take all these off ramps. Because for the joy of uh, uh, uh let me read it again because I don't want to botch it up. For the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, he endured. You got to have a reason to endure that pain. I talked about Chase Young in the earlier service. This is what Chase would say to you. So you got to be like them, those kind of people who even when you got 10 men on your back, you want to you, you can run right through. You know you're not 10 men, but because you can endure that, why well, is that? Because you understand the pride. This is how Jesus was saying. We Pilate, and when they came to get him, and Pilate tried to say, you know, I, 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 could, I could send you to the cross, I could crucify you, execute you, or I could not execute you. Jesus said, you really don't have that kind of authority. I was born for this. I was born for this. This was Chase Young said on one of his interviews of why talking to the wrong one day. He said, I was born for this. See, that's what makes you run through 10 people. That's what makes you run through the opposition. That's what makes you tell that opposition, you don't have no power over me. Not like that. Not like that. And until you have enough of an incentive to, of love, not to destroy your family, right. not to, to say, I'm pulling this in. Why? I am compelled by love. I am compelled by that call. I'm compelled. What, what did it say? It said uh, that Jesus did it for the pride, but it also said this. Um, uh, 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 uh. Here it is uh, in, in, in the previous verse. And that sin was so readily clings to and entangle us and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. There is an appointed course. This is part of that course. But until you know that there's a course and you become sold out, living, delivered, and everlasting righteous servant, reboot. This is reboot. Maybe, maybe you had those five talents and God has said, uh, 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 well done, my good and faithful servant. Now I'm getting ready to give you 10 more cities. 
Guess what that means to some people? Oh my God, that's risk. I got to do more. I just finished this. You ain't never finished. You'll never know you like God knows you. You'll never know how big that thing is in you until it's revealed bit by bit. The vision comes in one part, but for me, the for me, fulfillment comes in pieces. And you're going to keep getting a piece unless you jump on. Unless you soldier, get caught up in civilian affairs, stop eating the kind of food that empowers you to win, and start eating that junk food. That, that internet junk food. Until you stay with your meals. You stay on that diet of changing lives on the inside out. And you trust your God who came through before you, who showed you, listen, what you're looking for is inside you. I, but it's going to take me to bring it out of you. But it's inside you. But it's going to take me to call your name and call you out. Call the best of you out so that you can live forever. How are you going to live forever? You're going to leave your legacy right here. And I'm not talking about you working on a legacy. God has already decided that you're going to leave some disciples here. You're going to leave some seeds here. You're going to change some lives so that when you're gone, someone else is still finishing and carrying out the work that God called you to do. That's how we live in everlasting service. Can I just say this? Someone dear to him told me. Who's him? Chase. Chase Young, okay. Uh, Deron, uh, one, he trained his, his father couple other close friends of his dad and other people they trained him for this season mm -hmm. and they watched him and so we got to watch someone who grew up in the church and watch somebody absolutely and yes okay, I'm sorry. guess what i want you to hear listen if you saw a picture um listen that it ain't his body that's getting him there on it's, it's his mind and his faith <laughs> Now that body is something. That's a whole lot of cuts in the stomach. I, 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 I thought it was something. No more pictures. You know what? I thought it was fake. I didn't even know <laughs> that somebody could do that to their body. <laughs> but God bless you, my son. You have showed up that it can be done. But what am I saying? There's lots of bodies out there, but everybody don't have that mind and that faith. And I'm not talking about fake, fake, loud faith. I'm talking about trust in saying it this way. I was born for this. And when you say, I am born for this, you can't say that and not commit to it. Let me say this. Because that means you would be true about being born for this. When you are born for something, you don't quit. There you go. You don't quit. When you are born for something, somebody talking about you or opposition or misunderstanding you, don't make you sit down. And it don't make you leave. Mm -hmm. It don't make you wild out and drop the mic and do that, do some of that drama. No. Why? You were born for this. And when he says that I didn't understand it because I only watched the game when I was told he was coming on. And when he started doing this mm -hmm. before his games, when he would come out on the field and he'd break, but then he'd do like this. Put it on down. And put it, I'm saying, what has happened? He would just pull it down. And then I said, oh, they, they say he's the predator. And remember, we were cleaning out the prop one of the prompt things, and I found a predator mask, and I decided I'll take a picture of this mask on and send it. Why? Because, and I didn't realize that you just said it now, when he gets on that field, there's no fear, and he's the predator, and he's going after the target that he needs to go after. So go. Listen. Listen. <laughs> He's goaling. You were after. born for this. You were born again <laughs> for this. You were born for this. Do the work so that you can find that path. And I promise you, you won't need nothing on the outside of you to validate you, mm -hmm. to give you the incentive to do what you do. Because this is how Jeremiah said, that thing will be shut up in your bones. Mm -hmm. It will be so. It, and and with it, with it, uh, uh, Jeremiah said, when he was telling me it was shut up in his bone, because he was already saying it, he was saying, this has been shut up in my bone, but this thing has been in me. That's the reality of how being filled with the Spirit, filled with the mission of the Spirit, filled with God's destiny in your life, filled with God's will in your life in terms of him knowing what's best for you and what's best for me. So I'm so thankful, Deron, for this lesson. 
I'm so thankful for this moment and all that God is doing, the spirit of the truth is doing in our lives individually and corporately. And I'll just say this, I'm not going to mention the other person's name because I don't want to mess up his time and what he's got happening. Mm -hmm. But his guardian was able to share with me that I said, does he still feel that he is on the same level as the other people? He said, oh, he ain't backed up off of that. He, 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 he grew up in the ministry, but he, he also, he is filled with the spirit of God and he has no fear. I don't care what his age was or whatever, they would say, he, he would say, dad, I'm going, I, I am one of them. They ain't better than me. Listen, because I know I like to teach, I, when I saw the scripture in Psalm 119 that says, I am more uh, uh, effective than my teachers because I obey, mm -hmm. I've been believing that when I was two years okay. leaving. Right. I sat in the room with my leader, and I, and I used to check, I didn't challenge them. I used to say, That's not true. Right. Well, 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 why does it say that? The said, Jill, did you know you were challenging? Well, I said, No, I wasn't trying to challenge anybody. And I was like, Oh my God, she's saying this out loud. Well, what am I saying to you? What am I saying to you? Oh, there is a place. There is a place. And I absolutely hope that you all keep your feet where it's supposed to be so God can take us there. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm turning it over now. Sorry, Felicia. We can put you all up in the thing. Love you and speaks to it. Uh, amen. What I hear is it is time to encourage ourselves in the faith. It is time to encourage ourselves. You got to know, junk in junk out you're going to get to the point now you got to be selective in what you put in this body selective what you put in this spirit selective with what you have going on around you because faith in faith out because at the end of the day the goal is to endure you got to take 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 inventory of what's going on around you and saying is what's happening around me my words my thoughts the energies around me is it going to get me to that place of enduring so i can receive the prize and that's really important you know listen to somebody earlier this week and she kept saying over and over again if another thing happened i don't know what i'm gonna do if another thing happened you know listen to what you're saying listen to what you're saying you got to encourage yourself in the faith if another thing's happened another thing happens i'm gonna make it if another thing happens, I'm going to deal with that too. I'm going to overcome. If another thing happens, I'm going to still believe by faith that God is with me. He is not going to leave me. He's not going to forsake me. He's not, he's not going to steer me wrong. That's how you get comfortable with that part of your discernment, a part of what you're hearing. You get comfortable with it. You get comfortable with hearing with, to that, with that small voice because you are putting faith in, faith out. It's a constant recycling. Maybe in this season, you got to do more of that more frequently. You can't just be a show up on a Wednesday and a Sunday. You're going to have to really put some work in so that you are strengthened in the Lord, so that you are grounded in the faith. That is a work that you're going to have to do. But I believe that God has taken us there. and He is showing us that it's just not enough to do just a little bit. At this point in time, we got to see, we got to be real selective and we got to walk in what we know, where he has brought us from and where we believe that he will continue to take us and he will continue to lead us if we stay rooted and grounded in him. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your word, Father God. I thank you for your leaders, Father God. I thank you that they are discerning, Father God, in what they share, Father God, in what they hear from you, Father God. I thank you for your people, Father God, each and every person on the side of my voice, Father God. I thank you today that you came to encourage us, Father God, and show us, Father God, how far we have come. And we have been great soldiers in you, Father God, and we will continue on this journey with you. And you have not left us and you continue to prepare prepare us, Father God, for what's going on around us. God, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your care. I thank you for your provision. I thank you for your safety, Father God. I thank you for every beautiful mind that's underneath the sound of my voice, Father God, that you are settling them in you, Father God. We will be encouraged in you. We will encourage one another, Father God. We thank you and we honor you for this day, for your word, and for the seeds that you have planted in us today, Father. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.